And then this is what I heard. I heard assassination. An assassination plot has been devised, has been put in motion. A leader of the free world, Trump, they will plan to take out. They will try to disrupt the plans. They will try. These are plans of evil, says the Lord. Plans to divide your country. God says, I have plans that must come forth. I choose who I will use. I uplift kings and I bring them down. So I say, no, my plans will come forth and I will foil their plans. And you might say, well, does that mean that, 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 that God is, a, uh, in, in, has a, is in favor of Trump? That God has... See, God uses people. And you might say, but, but Trump is not a Christian. He doesn't serve God. He doesn't do... We, we, those things we don't know. We don't know. We actually don't know his heart. But this is one thing. In the Old Testament, God used King Cyrus to bring forth liberation and to bring freedom to the people of Israel. God will use whoever He wants to use, whether you agree with it or not. Things are in the plans of God that God is going to put into motion to bring liberation and to bring freedom, regardless of who and, and who you believe should be in the White House. What God is going to do, He will do. Hello, welcome. I want to get into the scripture. I want to get into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Psalms 59. Psalms 59. We're going to be reading it in the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, that's fine. I'm going to be reading it. Psalms 59. I'm going to begin on verse 1. Psalms 59, verse 1. It says, Deliver me from my enemies, O God, and protect me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from evildoers. And save me from bloodthirsty men. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me. For no offense or sin of mine, O Lord. I have done no wrong. Look at verse 4. I love it. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me. Look on my plight. Isn't that something? Evil men speak against you. Even men, evil men talk about you. Evil men plot against you. But God says, and, and the psalmist says, God, look at what they're doing to me. Take notice of what is happening. And he says in verse 5, it says, O Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Show no mercy to the wicked traitors. Look at verse 14. They return at evening snarling like dogs and prowl around the city and they wander about for food and how if they are not satisfied. Isn't that something? Not only are they attacking you in the morning, they're attacking you at noonday, they're attacking you in the evening. The enemy comes back, the accusations, the rumors, everyone that wants to do you harm is constantly at your doorstep, knocking on your door bringing all these uh, disappointments and discouragement. They're talking about you and setting up plans against you. But this is what I love what it says in the Word of God. Look at verse 16. I love what it says. This is my weapon of defense. It says, I will sing of your strength. Isn't that something? The, the, the weapon that is available to us when the enemy comes in and brings discouragement and brings depression is to begin to sing unto the Lord. And people might think that you are crazy. People might think that you have lost it. But see, a great weapon in the things of God is that you begin to sing unto the Lord. It doesn't say if you sing on key. It doesn't say that you need music. If you would just sing to the Lord. It says, but I will sing of your strength, not my strength, but the strength of God, that God will come through for you every time. It says, I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. Isn't that something? Verse 17 says this, oh, my strength, I will sing to praise you. 
You, O oh God, are my fortress and my loving God. I love that. God is your fortress. God is your answer. Whatever the enemy is bringing against you, whatever the enemy is accusing you of, whatever the enemy, uh, whatever rumors he's bringing uh, against you, it doesn't matter. I know that God is going to see me through. I know that God is going to move on my behalf. You just began to sing to the Lord. It might sound crazy, but you began to sing in the midst of the battle, began to sing unto the Lord, began to praise the Lord. Don't, don't get off track and began to say, well, God is not going to do it. God is not going to come. God will fight for you. God wants you to move in faith. God wants you to begin to speak to, you, to your giants. God wants you to begin to face your giants. Don't run and hide. Don't bury your head in the sand. You face your enemies and begin to declare the word of God over your enemies. If God brought you out of one battle, he'll bring you out of another one. And if he brought you out of yesterday's battle and in the day before that, he'll bring you out again today. God is a good God and he will see you through. I want to share this word that the Lord has given me, July the 14th, 2024. I want to share that word with you. I've been feeling just a very, very strong anointing today. And I'm still feeling that anointing right now. So I want to pray for you. I believe that God is going to move on your behalf. God is going to break some things. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to rip up the declaration of papers that the enemy has set over you and over your family. I truly believe that. I don't believe in wasting time. I don't believe in wasting time in the things of God. You know, we could, I could be doing other things, but I know what the Lord God has said to me. God is going to move on your behalf. So I want you to begin to get ready. So I want to read this word that the Lord has given me. I want to share that word with you, July the 14th, 2024, I want to share that word with you, and it reads like this. He says, I am the God, and there is none like me. I am God, and there is none like me. I open doors, and I shut doors. My will will come to pass. I have released my angels to speak my name over the earth. When they shout, and when they declare my name over the earth, the earth will shake with fear. God says, I am about to reveal myself to those who love me. A deeper revelation of who I am. Let me, let me say that again. I believe that's very, very important. I'm about to reveal myself to those who love me. A deeper revelation of who I am, I'm about to reveal to them. It says, seek me with all your hearts, and you will find me. Seek me with all your hearts, and you will find me, says the Lord. See, I, I believe that is very important. You need to make a scheduled time with God that you meet with Him every day. You know, sometimes we put other things before the Lord, and we have uh, chores, and, and, and we're running through the house. What else do I need to do? And, and we're going to go and, and pay those bills and do this and run... Put God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness. Like it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the things of God. Set prayer as the first thing when you wake up in the morning. You know, uh, set your time. If it's, you know, you wake up your children at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock to get them ready for school, or whatever it may be, or you're going to get ready for work. Set your time an hour before so you can spend time in the presence of the Lord. Some people rush through prayer and they're expecting to hear from the Lord. Sometimes during prayer, we just need to stop and be still and hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of God. You know, I, I, I pray that you would have a notebook by your bedside, a notebook on your table, somewhere where the Lord will begin to speak to you. When the Lord begins to speak to you, write those words out. Because, you know, when God begins to reveal some things, it doesn't mean it's going to happen right away. It might be the following week. It might be the following month. It might be the following year. But you're going to go back and God's going to remind you, remember when I gave you this word? Remember when I spoke to you? And those things will come to pass. 
And later on, I want to teach you, there's three voices to hear that you have to distinguish. One is the voice of God. Number two, it is your own voice. And number three, it is the voice of the enemy. And later on in the programs, I would love to be able to cover that in the name of Jesus. And this is what the Lord said. He said, greater earthquakes are coming. The grounds will open up and cause destruction. Breaking water lines. Water lines are going to be exposed. Greater earthquakes are coming. The earthquakes will happen around the world. World leaders have assembled to bring change, a shifting. They want to bring uh, bondage to generations. Let me read that again. World leaders have assembled to bring a change, a shifting. They want to bring bondages to the generations that are coming. They want to ration food. They want to limit babies being born into this world. They want to govern your life with an iron fist. A dictator is going to rise up. This dictator is fierce and has evil in his eyes and, it has, and he has evil plans. But I have said, not yet. God said, not yet. I will stop their plans for a season. I want you to pay attention to that. God says, I will stop their plans for a season. My power, my love is coming. And it will change multitudes of people. Change. A big change is coming. And I don't know why I keep hearing September. A big change. A big change is coming. I keep hearing September. September keeps resounding in my spirit. A change. A big change is coming. Seattle. Change is also coming to your city. Revivals will break out in your city. And, and it's not just the city, but it's the, the state. Seattle, let me read that again. Seattle, change is coming. Revivals will break out in your streets. I am raising up an army from within your city. Don't move in fear. Your programs will not change people. They will not work. God says, I am the only one who has the power to redeem them. So take your place and move in your position. And you might think, well, I'm just one person. What, what, a, what difference can I make? You make a big difference. See, the thing we have to understand that God calls individuals to change their world. You may be a part of a church, but together in unison, you can do something great. Not saying that one individual can't do anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, when you get together with other people in the body of Christ, you, be, you can begin to do damage against the kingdom of darkness. You can do damage. The plans that the enemy has, you can break them in the name of Jesus. I see God moving in the native people. I see God moving. Let me say that again. I see God moving in the native people. I saw a map of the United States, and then I saw red lines jumping from one state to another state, jumping, jumping around. Then I saw red lines going from one state to another, making connections. I saw uh, these lines, these red lines jumping from one state to another, making connections. And this is what I heard God say, Native tribes will come together and will unite for my glory. A very strong unity is coming. A revival movement, a movement is coming to many tribes. God says, when you gather together, I will be there. You will experience my glory. You will experience healings. Many prophets, listen to this, many prophets from various tribes, God says, I am right raising up to declare my word, says the Lord. Let me read that again. God says, many prophets from various tribes, I will rise up to declare my word, says the Lord. China. China will strike. 
China will flex its muscles. China is ready for movement. China has prepared herself. So pray over Taiwan. Pray over China's neighbors. Pray. Pray, says the Lord. This is another word that, that God says, pray and watch over Romania. Pray and watch over Romania. California, great earthquakes are coming. Let me say that again. California, great earthquakes are coming. New York and regions around New York. You have said we don't need God. Massachusetts, Delaware, and the far eastern region. You have put your trust in money. You have said, we are in control of our own destiny. You have taken pride in your businesses. You have taken pride in your deals. But God says, I will shake up your investments. I will shake up your stocks. And I will shake up your wealth. Because I love you, says the Lord, I will get your attention. It's only through me that you will find peace for your souls. Isn't that something? It is only through God that you will find peace for your souls. You can't find it in money. You can't find it in wealth. You can't find it in possessions. Peace can only come. You know, the reason why I can go to sleep at night and not worry. You might say, well, you don't have any problems. Oh, yes, I do. I have problems like everyone else. But I can sleep at night because I trust in Almighty God. He gives me peace, the peace that goes beyond all understanding. And I believe that He can do it for you also. I believe that. God said this, I am also going to clean my house. Now, I've been hearing that lately, these past few months, that God is cleaning house. God said, I'm, I'm going to clean my house. Big denominational pastors, superintendents, bishop, missionaries. God says, I'm going to expose them and I'm going to remove them. And let me say that again. Big denominational pastors, superintendents, bishop, missionaries. God says, I'm going to expose them and I'm going to remove them. They have brought sin into my house. They have abused the little ones. They have counseled with an evil heart. And I will not turn my eyes away. I will expose their sin because I have showed them what they have done wrong. And I have showed them their sin. But they, they decided not to repent. They did not want to repent. So I will remove them, says the Lord. Isn't that something? God's house is a holy house. God's servants, we ought to walk in holiness. We need to make a determination. It's all God or it's nothing. We have to determine if we're going to serve God with everything that we have. Serve the Lord thy God with all the heart, with all our strength, with all our might. We love God and we want to do exactly what the Lord says. We want to please God. Just like a child says, you know, brings a, a colored paper and says, even though the line, the, they painted, they colored the lines all out of, out of the lines and they made it and it looks all scribblish. But they come and they bring this, this coloring book and this page and they bring it to you and say, look, look what, look what I colored. And what do we say? Oh, that's a bad picture. You don't know how to color within the lines. Get that picture. No, we don't do that. What do we say? Oh, great job. Good job. That's all God wants. God knows that we struggle with sin. God knows that we struggle in this life. But still, God requires from us to walk a life of perfection. To walk the best that we can. That we give our whole hearts. That we render ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. When you have time, read it. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. That is something that the Lord requires from you to serve the Lord God, to run after the things of the Lord. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, but this is a good time. The rapture is about to happen. Soon we are going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, give your life to Jesus while there is still time. 
There's a song that came out that talks about tomorrow. No one promised you tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow is not guaranteed. You might be here today and gone tomorrow. You might have some loved ones that have already passed on and have gone to be with the Lord. We pray that they knew the Lord Jesus Christ. You might have had some friends that have already died and, 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 and gone to be with the Lord. You might have some family members. But see, uh, life is not guaranteed for tomorrow. So while you still have breath in your lungs, make a decision today to serve the living God. So I want to ask you a question. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? And Revelation 3.20 says this. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will come in and I will, and I will have sup with him. I will have a, a supper. I will have dinner. In other words, I will have a relationship with you. God, Jesus, wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have a relationship. Jesus is not far away and distant, so far away that he doesn't care about you. He cares about you. He knows your name. I encourage you. Would you say this prayer with me and dedicate your life to Jesus? I want you to just close your eyes and say, Jesus, I receive you in my heart, and I know that you will come into my life and you will change me, that I will never, never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need some prayer, I want you to call this number, 210-670-1930. That's 210-670-1930. We want to come into an agreement with you. We want to pray for you. We believe that God will answer your prayers. Also, those of you that want to sow into our ministry, there are four ways in the description box below that you can do that. I had, I had talked to you and, and I had told you that the Lord is going to bless with a double portion blessing. Some of you believe it and some of you do not. But I'm talking to those that have moved in faith. God is going to bless you. God is going to hear your prayer and the, you, have sown, you have sown a seed of faith. And you have believed God for the impossible. See, Hebrews chapter 11 talks about faith. Someone said, well, you talk about money and you, you said that God's going to bless me if I give money. He said, uh, the person said, I don't, I don't believe that. Then explain to me Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. If you have time, I want you to read that. God says, if you bring if you bring your tithes and your offering, if you bring those tithes and offering to my house, then and only then will I will open the windows of heaven and bless you. Not only will I bless you, but I will, I will, I will, I will come against the devourer. See, the devourer is the enemy. He comes to steal and rob and kill and destroy what God has given you. But God says, I will stand up against him. So that you'll be able to prosper. See, and, and the scripture says that God delights in the prosperity of his children. That's what the Lord says. Not, you know, look for it in, in the scripture. God delights in the prosperity of his servants, of his children. God loves to. And just like, like us, when we bless our children, we're not going to give them old tannies, torn and, and tannies that have holes in them and water gets in. No, we buy them something new because we want to bless our children. God is the same way. We're so used to receiving crumbs from that is falling off the table. No, God wants you to sit at his table. God wants to give you good things in the name of Jesus. So four ways that you can sow into our ministry. If you want to sow internationally, you can get a hold of us at our email at jjccministries at gmail.com. And we'll let you know how you can do that. We are believing God for a mobile stage trailer. We are believing God that we're going to win souls for the kingdom of God. I love that. Because we're going to pull them from the kingdom of darkness and, put them, and bring them into the kingdom of God. Their names are about to be written in the Lamb's book of life. And you, those of you that have sown towards this mobile stage trailer, you are partnering up with us. Isn't that something? People are going to come up to you in heaven and say, thank you for your investment. Thank you because of your investment, I heard the gospel and I gave my life to Jesus and I am here because of you. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. So I encourage you, 
sow into this ministry. You are sowing into good ground. Romans 8.31 says this, that if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. So Romans 8.31 says this, that if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. Romans 8.31, if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. I want to encourage you, we're going to be going live on July the 18th. That's Thursday, July the 18th. I encourage you, uh, we're going to begin at 7.30 Central Standard Time. Bring your questions and bring your comments. Whatever questions you have, whatever you want to comment, it's, a, it's going to be an open forum, questions and answers. So I invite you, uh, let your neighbors know, let your friends know, let your, fam your church family know that we're going live. And we'll get, we just want to spend some time in the Word of God with you. So I'm so glad that you could spend some time with us today. God bless you. And we'll see you next time on the Prophetic Channel. Amen.